Oh, we're live. How awkward. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Welcome to Studio Live today. And something that we do every now and then around here is just a very random, casual, ask me anything Q&A kind of stream. And that's what we're going to be doing here today. Welcome aboard. If you do have questions, uh, I will try to answer anything you want to throw at me. And in fact, you can do it by sticking a big Q in front of your comment just like that. And uh, I will endeavour to answer any questions that may be burning on the edge of your mind. We'll say good day to the folks who are here live in just a jiffy. I also got a few things to update you on around the channel and some things that have been going on. Uh, we'll talk about uh, your music live and the happy hour and and uh, Thomas and Jade doing happy hours too. There's a lot going on. 2024 has started with a bang. And uh, yeah, I'm keen to have a chat and answer any questions that you may have. Should we say hello to the folks who are kind enough to be here live? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, hello to Mr. Fomiati. G'day to you. G'day, Cobber. How you doing, mate? Uh, hello to Cold Acre Kia Kia. Kahalo rocks. <laughs> Never know how to <laughs> pronounce your name. Yes, you made it. You did it. Uh, g'day to you, Mark Bro. Hello to Skeeter Melody. Thank you for being here. Alex Bacchus, having a late night over there in Germany. Hope you are doing well, my friend. Princess LDG. G'day. Uh, yes, I thought I would go. I would go hatless. Subject is hatless. Repeat hatless, so that you can see the shine off the dome today. <laughs> hello, Fat Panda Cat. G'day, Jack Stevens. Hello to you, Ashley HM. Thank you for your kind donation, Ashley HM. It's Kihawala, like Koala. I'll, I'll remember that. Kihawala. Oh, man. It's going to be one of those shows. But that's okay. We're here uh, We're here just to uh, just to have a bit of a random rant and a bit of a chat. It's always fun. Hello, Tremor Bear. I saw Tremor Bear and, and many of you on Jade's show earlier today. And uh, very cool again to see Jade trolloping. Is that, is that the word for it? Trolloping around? <laughs> maybe that's one of those Australian things that people don't actually use. Or maybe uh, only old people. It's, it's an old-timey word. It's like uh, flabbergasted. I'm flabbergasted by Jade's level of trolloping. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, hello, Joe and Barry Glenn. Better than tramping, I guess, Jade. Tramping all over Melbourne? That's, that's very different. That, that means a couple of different things. Neither of them are particularly positive. Uh, hello, John Swanson as well. I hope you are all doing fine and dandy. Uh, oh, there you go. Okay. Uh, Jade's given me the definition. I don't need to mention that. A trollop. Is that what it is? Okay. What, what am I thinking of though? Traveling. Um, there's, there's something where you gallivant. Maybe I was going for gallivant, potentially. Uh, Kihoalu. Kiho All Kiho All right. I'm going with that one. Kiho Alu. Kihoalu. Uh, hello, Sticks for Guns. Uh, Richard, did I see that you just had a release? I know this is this is the show, by the way. Uh, we, we go off on tangents and we just chat for a while. Uh, I, I think that I saw on the fabulous, s fabulous uh, frolicking, maybe frolicking, maybe that was it. The fabulous create record release Facebook group. I reckon I saw, to correct me if I'm wrong, Richard, but I reckon I saw, uh, yeah, there it is. Legend has it by Sticks for Guns. Um, I'm, I'll jump over here just because I do have to test my, I do have to test this. And uh, I know this is, this is a private group, Create, Record, Release. Uh, search it on Facebook if you're a Facebook user. Join the group. Great place for, for sharing music. Let, let's throw a like on this one from Richard. Um, oh, I need to test my audio anyway. So let's, uh, let's give this a little bit of a play. I'm sure it's going to be submitted for a Your Music Live. Uh, but let's just see. If this is going to uh, work with my audio setup here. Oh, yeah. there as well. Even on Facebook video, it looks cool. Uh, but yeah, how good does it sound out? Richard always finds the nicest sounding synths in the world. I don't know, I don't know quite how he selects uh, his, I'd, I'd love to see behind the scenes uh, from Richard one day. Um, yeah, I, I love, I know that for some people, they just enjoy the music and the visuals that folks put together. 
but for me, I love I love the behind the scenes. I love knowing how people do things. Uh, hello, speaking of people that do great things, hello, Patrick Moonbird over there in Canada. Patrick does some amazing. Uh, were you uh, see? I, I do follow folks on social media. I know I don't always comment and, and I don't always like get back to folks because yeah, I, I have a, what is that? A, a, a good problem to have, which is that there's a lot of people that I, uh, that I see stuff from. And uh, Patrick, I think you were getting some radio airplay recently as well um, from what I saw. So um, yeah, Patrick makes some great music as well. Both Patrick and, uh, and Richard sticks for guns uh, are, are prominent members on my, uh, my tax paying bill paying admin doing playlist where I put like low fi just chill tunes. Both of them make really amazing chilled out laid back music, which is very cool as well. Uh, yes, good stuff indeed. Um, where are we at? Yeah, sorry, go, going off on tangents there. A uh, big weekend of live streaming coming up. It is a Saturday morning here in Australia. Uh, you, again, if you didn't catch Jade's uh, gallivanting series, not trolloping, gallivanting uh, around Melbourne. Uh, she did Williamstown today, which is very cool. Uh, yeah, I love Melbourne. One of, one of my favourite cities. Second best city in Australia. I know, every time I say that, I get uh, I get into trouble. Uh, but yeah, I, I love watching uh, Jay wandering around Melbourne um, and seeing the sights and, and reliving those through her because, uh, uh, yeah, I've been to Melbourne a bunch of times, but I haven't been everywhere. Like, I've been to all the usual places like, you know, St Kilda and around the laneways and, and other stuff, but uh, yeah, seeing a Another side that I hadn't already seen is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, radio play and verified on Instagram now. There you go. Hitting the big time. I love it. Excellent stuff there, uh, Patrick Moonbird. Uh, no, not a problem. I, uh, I appreciate you. Because, again, uh, this whole community... This whole community is all because of you. Like I, uh, I've always say this: it's YouTube, not MeTube. Uh, it's your music live. Like the create, record, release group. If it was just what I'm creating, recording, and releasing, that would be pretty gosh darn dull and boring. Uh, so it is. It is really about you and the community. And uh, yeah, I dig it. All right, uh, let us say hello to Russ eighty eight eighty nine. There you go. Hello, and yeah, can't wait to walk around Adelaide. Adelaide's a good place as well for walking around. We got some cool stuff over here as well. Trust me on that one. Uh, I wanted to point you towards some shows that are coming up. So I'm, I was starting to mention this weekend. And uh, if you go over to your YouTube, you should be subscribed to all these folks already. But uh, when, when I come over here to my YouTube, it, it shows me there you go. There's Thomas Christ. He'll be kicking. He's actually calling it the Rockin' Saturday Night Kickoff. So that's going to be the first show that you need to see. Look, I'm going to do my due, due diligence here. Let's let's all do it together. I'm going to I'm going to send this over. I'll, I'll post it on X, shall I? Is anyone still on X? Do I need to go on an X rant? Maybe not. Uh, but I'll I'll post the link there. That is going to be the Thomas Christ Live Rock and Saturday Night Kickoff episode 145. If you don't mind, you then need to get yourself over to Jade Star because she'll be doing this, the opening hour. She's doing some of her non-conformist Dread Circus originals. So we'll throw a like on that one. We'll share this over here as well. We'll chuck this in. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe when you come over to um, to SA, we sh you should go over to Kangaroo Island. <gasps> That'd be epic. The ferry over to KI. You and I on a ferry to Kangaroo Island? That would be the most cliche thing in the world if we're over on KI taking like footage of kangaroos. Sadly, I went to KI recently. I saw two kangaroos. And as folks in Australia know, when and where do you see kangaroos the most here in Australia? On the side of the road, laying down. <laughs> Is that kangaroo okay, Daddy? Yes, he's just inside out. <laughs> It's going to be one of those days today. Uh, so get yourself over to the opening hour and check out what Jade Star is doing. And then if you uh, if you search my name and the word happy hour, you're going to uh, you're going to be able to come here for my all new all singing all dancing. Oh no, that's not going to work, is it? <laughs> I've done too many of these, and I'm doing them. I'm doing them generically at the moment, but you know where to find it. It's uh, in fact, if you go, he, here's here's a tip for you. If you ever need to find the latest uh, Studio Live Today live shows, oh god, <laughs> apparently don't do that. StudioLiveToday.com/live. I think I spelt it incorrectly. There you go. That's going to take you to this page. So if you're ever wondering, hey, is 
Uh, is Pete live? Is Pete going to do a show today? When's your music live? When's the next happy hour? Studiolivetoday.com slash live takes you straight into this playlist so you can see the show you're watching right now. Yesterday's uh, live premiere of uh, the Apple Vision Pro and then Garage. Oh, I've got to change the order of these actually because happy hour goes there. This is Ask Me Anything, which is there. Oh man, it's all over the shop. So YouTube doesn't by default often uh, do your things in the right order. Is that right? That one goes there. There we go. That's better. That's the right order. All right. So uh, there you go. That's all good. Yeah, the kangaroos are just sleeping. Uh, yeah, look, every, every country has their uh, have their roadkill. And unfortunately, when you've got a country that does have a lot of kangaroos and koalas and wombats and lizards and things, that yeah, most of the time you see them, they're uh, on the side of the road. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know. Uh, how's it going? I've, I've noticed. I've been keeping an eye on all the weather stuff, and uh, looks like you're getting a, a, a serious winter up there in the northern hemisphere in the UK and uh, and Canada and uh, USA. There's uh, quite a bit of snow around, especially in the east coast of the US that I've been seeing over there. So how is everyone here in Australia? It seems we're finally getting a little bit of summer. We uh, it, it has been a mild summer here in Adelaide, and I think it's been the same in uh, in Melbourne. Getting lots of weather up in Sydney and, and up in Queensland, unfortunately, including some flooding, which uh, Queensland, oh, mate, Queensland, every couple of years, Queensland just gets absolutely destroyed uh, by something. Like, and it's, yeah, it's flood. If it's not bushfires, it's floods. And if it's not floods, it's like typhoons and hurricanes and all the rest of it. So hopefully, wherever you are, you're, uh, you're staying safe. But yeah, here, oh, I actually got in, in our little paddling pool yesterday. Yeah, it was hot enough. It was 37 degrees Celsius, which haven't done the connection lately, but uh, 37 degrees is, haven't done the conversion, sorry. It's about 102, 105 in that ballpark uh, in terms of temperature. So yeah, it was warm. So uh, I enjoyed that. I got to hang out there in the paddling pool with the family, uh, kick back and relax and have a couple of brewskis and enjoy the uh, the the summer weather that's finally kicked in uh, dip in the temperature for sticks for guns up there in the uh, UK uh, let's see kangaroo makes great leather for thronging I'll take your word for it as a as resident vegetarian I'll uh, I haven't uh, I did eat kangaroo kangaroo meat's actually very lean and very good for you it's kind of it's kind of gamey. It's like a, a cross between like a, a beef and venison. It's sort of it's not super gamey. It's not super gamey like venison, but it's more gamey than a beef, and it's a beef texture and kind of flavour and and look to it. But quite delicious. And if you yeah, look, you know what? Yes, we do. It's someone said to me once. Um, oh, I can't believe that you eat emus and kangaroos. They're on your your country's crest. It'd be like Americans eating a bald eagle. And I'm like, well, you know, bald eagle, you know, fricasseed on a uh, lot of better rice. It might be okay. You don't know, man. You don't know. <laughs> Says the vegetarian. I right, had the warmest December, hardly any snow, but uh, reprieve is over. Cold as Spotify's heart. Oh, cutting deep. Should we talk about Spotify for a minute? Uh, yeah, look, this is the way these shows work. Uh, often it's not even questions. It's just uh, someone will throw a comment out there and we'll talk about things. What do you reckon of Spotify? in 2024 do you think uh have they have they blown it have they flown the coop are they going down the gurgler uh, in my predictions show i did recently which you can catch the replay here of here on the channel i did talk about spotify and i said i think their dominance as the platform is about to change i think more and more people mostly through me trying to convince them of this because I'm a big advocate of diversity and I think that YouTube premium and YouTube music is actually a lot better than Spotify because you get ad-free YouTube uh, as well as getting the full YouTube music library as well as um, offline video viewing and a bunch of other cool things in YouTube. So I use YouTube music and even Apple music is making some gains now. They've got some sort of more exclusive things and exclusive features uh, happening through Apple music. And for a lot of people like me, if you need iCloud drive uh, access, so if you need the extra gigabytes for your iCloud drive to back up your iPhones and your iPads and your GarageBand and your Logic, then you might as well get like the Apple One subscription anyway that has Apple TV and Apple Music and uh, Apple Gaming, which I don't really use, uh, Apple News, which I definitely don't use, and uh, um, and also Apple Music and the, the, the cloud storage. So for me, yeah, I think it's, um, I think it's, it's, I've been away from Spotify for a long time, but 
here's the thing. I think for younger folks, so my daughter, for instance, she actually paid for with her own money, uh, Spotify premium for like a month because all of her friends are sharing their music and their playlists on Spotify. So to want to be part of the crowd, you need to be part of Spotify. Whereas for me, I don't care about any of that social stuff. I don't care about playlists. I don't care about curation. I don't care about sharing with other people. I just want to listen to my music and do, it's usually old 90s stuff anyway. So I don't know. I don't know. I just think that, uh, yeah, Spotify have done enough little niggly bad things that people are going to start realizing that it's not really worth spending the uh, 14, 15, 17, $20 a month with them in the future. But what do you think? Let me know. Uh, mention of snow and a week of minus temperatures. Eee, yeah, that's that's rough. Uh, that's something that we don't really understand down here. Hello, Midnight Bandit. I hope you are doing well, my friend. Uh, thank you. I've, I've seen you doing some live streaming lately as well, which I haven't caught any of uh, because, again, I, I try to catch up with everything that's going on around the community. It's almost impossible. Uh, weird winter for Mark, 20 centimetres of snow, followed by 30 millimetres of rain, followed by minus 15 freeze over in 36 hours. Jeebus, that's a rough couple of days, Mark. That's, uh, that's, that's less than ideal, as I'd like to say. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it, it is strange stuff for us here in Australia. We don't have any of that. A leather thong, that would be interesting. Uh, we do have leather thongs here in Australia, but as you probably know, thongs are things you wear on your feet. You call them flip-flops in other parts of the world. Uh, the thong that you're thinking of is a G-string here in Australia. Uh, not to be confused with a G-string that you put on your guitar. Yeah. <laughs> it's, all going, uh, it's all going differently. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't use Spotify. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I think that it, its dominance is, is going, to, going to drop, but maybe not. Uh, YouTube and Apple are my go-to, but still put my music on Spotify. And that's the thing. I also think that a lot of people have just knee-jerked their way away from Spotify when all of this potential stuff happened. Now, keep in mind that Spotify haven't actually announced anything to do with anything yet. So I would strongly advise against knee-jerk reactions like removing your music. Because for starters, if you use someone like DistroKid to remove your music from Spotify, you've got to pull it down from everywhere and then put it all back up again. So I don't, I don't, I don't think it's worthwhile. Not yet. Wait till you know exactly what is happening. I think Spotify should do direct downloads for songs at a reasonable price. Well, that's why I think that Bandcamp is actually going to do good things in 2024. I'm hearing more and more good things about Bandcamp and people I know and trust are using Bandcamp to sell their music. And the one problem I have with Bandcamp is I think that their, their interface and their app is a bit clunky. And I think that's the biggest uh, drawback for a single platform like Bandcamp, or even if Spotify were to sell music, or even the old iTunes model, it's you have to go there to listen to music. And I don't know anyone, I, I, well, maybe it happens, but I don't see anyone loading up the Bandcamp app and rocking out to music because as soon as, like I, I bought, say for instance, I bought Thomas Christ's entire catalog on Bandcamp because Thomas is awesome. But when I go to listen to his music, I tend to just go to YouTube Music or just onto YouTube and watch his videos because they're cool as well. So I don't. I did that more to support him. So it's almost like a token purchase thing, which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing fundamentally. But yeah, it was more of just a I want to support Thomas, so I'm going to buy his music because I know that through uh, through uh, what am I saying Bandcamp through Bandcamp that Thomas gets a lot more of those proceeds than if I were to stream music or buy it through iTunes or whatever it is. I know, CDs because I'm too lazy to get up to skip tracks. I mean, here's the thing. Physical media is making a bit of a comeback, isn't it? Like, that's what I'm seeing. Uh, even CDs and DVDs. Like, I'm seeing videos on YouTube now saying, yeah, yeah, the, the physical me media, like DVDs, are, are still the king of movies. And the more that we see the splitting of, like, have you ever tried to find a movie lately? I, I'll sit down on like a, tonight, for instance, I'll sit down with my wife on a Saturday night and we might be like, I really want to watch Office Space, let's say. That's one of my favourite movies of all time. Mike Judge, all about office culture, really cool movie. See it if you haven't seen it. Um, I really, so if I want to watch Office Space, what I do now is I have to go to, let, let, let's do it live. Let's do a little uh, a little experiment here. So what I do, when I want to find this, is I go to my Google and I say, Office Space Movie Streaming. Oh, look, you can see people are already doing this. Office Space Movie Streaming. Where to watch Office Space? Disney Plus subscription, Apple TV, rent a Okay, so Disney Plus. Okay, so then I have to go to Disney Plus. Like, compare TV 
is the one that I usually end up at because it'll say, oh, okay, so you got you got to go to Disney. That's an easy one. Sometimes it's really ambiguous and sometimes the information's out of date. It'll say, oh, yeah, it's on Disney Plus. And you go there and it's not there because they've lost the rights to it last week and Netflix have bought the rights to it. And I think this is going to happen with our music. Like when the whole original Spotify, Joe Rogan, Neil Diamond, not Neil Diamond, Neil Young. Sorry, Neil Young. I just called you Neil Diamond. When that all went down, we, we saw a lot of this as well with people moving their music. You know what people can't do? Walk into your house, go up to your CD library and take out a CD and say, I'm sorry, Neil Young has decided that he's not going to allow Pete Johns to listen to his music anymore. So, yeah, I don't know. I think that uh, we, we went all in on the online and uh, maybe it was a small mistake. I don't know. But yeah, you're right. The, the money going to the artist is a big thing. And, and look, I'm, I'm big uh, into independent, obviously, because I'm an independent creator. Uh, I run an independent business. I'm a sole trader. Uh, whilst I have relationships with Apple and Google and Amazon, like all of these giant companies, I like the fact that I'm independent. But I also realize, or uh, I think it would be naive of me to say, that we can just take everything away from them. Because to be honest, if I didn't have my YouTube ad revenue, if I didn't have Patreon platform to set up uh, for my membership, if I didn't have uh, Amazon affiliate sales revenue, I don't think I could be an independent creator. So I'm independent, but am I really? Because I'm I suckling at the teat of big business. I don't know. It's something I grapple with from time to time. A centipede with flip-flops. Ah, oh, sounds like a far side cartoon, Mark. I'm sure I'm sure there was a far side. Uh, yeah, and that's the thing. The artists get squat. And the thing is, these rumors, if you didn't catch up on the rumors from Spotify, the rumors were that they were going to stop paying small artists. So let's just say Pete Johns, uh, let's say I get a hundred streams a month, which equates to two dollars. It doesn't, but let's just say it does for simplicity. But if Spotify, what they, what people have been saying Spotify are going to do is say, if you get any less than 500 streams, you get paid bupkis. And what they're going to do is the couple of million dollars that they would have paid out in tiny little small increments to independent uh, creators, they're going to give that back to the big creators. Because what they're saying is that us homegrown indie creators are taking money out of the pockets of working artists. Whereas I'd say the flip side is true, that the big corporations and the big record labels are actually screwing their own artists while at the same time pointing at the tiny little 10% chunk that is independent creators and say, we want that too. But we're not going to give that to the, these artists anyway. We're going to keep most of that for ourselves and keep paying them a pittance or half a pittance. Uh, I don't think you can put covers on Bandcamp. I think you're right. I'd have to look into it. Uh, I don't think you can. G'day, Michael Cope. Uh, in Midwest US, 68 degree room with low humidity. Pretty comfortable. I don't know why others are in freezing temps. Seems silly to me, but each to their own. And yeah, look, I know I, I look at that and I'm like, I, I wouldn't live in a, a, a climate like that. But some people like it. Some people actually enjoy the snow. And they like um, having colder temperatures. And again, more power to you. You do you, boo. But uh, yeah, I'm with Michael. <laughs> uh, Adelaide is a very temperate climate. On our coldest winter day, it's going to be 10 degrees Celsius or 5 degrees. Like we, It doesn't get down to freezing at all here in, uh, in Adelaide, which is why I like it. That's what I like. Uh, centipedes are terrifying. They're the ones that... Um, that uh, uh, just watch out. See, uh, you need to put me onto this stuff, Mars. Um, I, I, need, I, need, I need options because uh, at the moment I'm juggling about seven different, uh, seven different, what are they called? Subscription platforms. Kihaolu. Uh, oh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, I don't know what it is, but I've just got this mental block with your name. I'm going to call you K-Rox for today. Because I'm going to, otherwise I'm going to offend you with my pronunciation. I prefer to buy CDs uh, if I can go directly to the artist or to buy a will. And that's the thing: if you if you're buying from an artist, yeah, buy from their Bandcamp or buy from their merch page because that's where that's where they're going to make the best uh, the best money. Uh, Russ, who's been using Bandcamp a lot recently for his charity for life album, let's give that a plug, shall we? Uh, oh, Band Camp Charity. I can't remember exactly what it's called. I call it something different. Uh, I'll see if I can find it by just doing this. Music for Life Charity Band Camp. I think this is the one. Look at that. See? Good good quality uh, search engine optimization. 
So let's uh, let's throw this. So it's musicforlifecharity.bandcamp.com. So while I rant on this, I'll uh, I'll throw that link in the chat there. Uh, yeah, it is it is definitely a better option uh, if you're a musician, and it's something that I'm planning to do for 2024. Is uh, as much as I love having my music everywhere using DistroKid, genuinely do. I love the fact that people don't have to go anywhere. They can go they can go wherever they want to listen to my music. I do think that. A lot of people have said to me, in fact, people, a lot of people are saying, no, I won't say it like that, I'm sorry. But people have said to me, you should just put your stuff on Bandcamp. I would buy it. I'd buy a 10, I'd buy your album for $10. I'd rather buy your album for $10 on Bandcamp than go and navigate iTunes or go and um, like do a PayPal donation or whatever. It's because they, they feel like that's related to the music. So I think I need to get that. If I were to work my way towards becoming a more professional creator on YouTube, uh, would I take little steps and would it take a lot of research? Uh, yes and yes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, look, by all means, do. I don't want to be negative at all about being a creator. As I mentioned before, you do have to accept that you're you're building. I know Jade's sick of me saying this, but you're building, you're building your house on borrowed land and the landlord can come in and change the conditions at any time so that is frustrating as a creator you can say i'm an independent creator yeah except you're relying on like google cloud for storage you go gmail for a lot of stuff you're relying on youtube giving you free access to be able to live stream and to upload your videos once you start getting monetized you're relying on them to actually monetize your videos correctly and not not flag them as non-monetizable you're relying on the fact that you're going to get decent advertisers that people will actually be interested in and will actually click the ads off because that's related to your click-through rate of the advertising and yeah so there's a lot of little things but you're spot on with this and with anything it's like music you're not going to go i'm going to start music and i'm releasing an album next month like a lot of people kind of want to jump the steps what should you do first when you start learning music you should learn an instrument or you should learn a piece of software and then you should start a song maybe it's not even a song maybe you just work on an eight bar or a 16 bar loop then you complete your first song then you get feedback on that song from other people that have been doing it longer than you and you start incorporating that feedback into your music then you make another song then you make another song you get what i'm saying here and then eventually in a year or two you've got 12 songs you're really happy with and you put that out as an album it's kind of the same and i think you're doing it right midnight bandit in that you should start but don't start with your expectations being up here if you're doing like my first live streams were to like two or three people because I didn't have the audience and I didn't really know what I was doing. I wasn't able to engage with a live audience. And the same with my videos. I had under a thousand subscribers for the first two years of this channel. Keep that in mind. If, you, if you're feeling like, oh, I'm not gonna get anywhere. Yeah, first two years I did this. I was putting out videos week after week and you know, some would get 10 views, some would get 100 views. Occasionally I'd crack into some space that would give me a thousand views. It wasn't until I said, hey, did you know that you can get a toothpick and shove it in the port here and clean it out that I actually had a, a video that actually got multiple thousands of views. So, yeah. But what is that old Gretzky thing? You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So as long as you've got clear expectations set and exactly what you're saying, you chunk it down and you do it bit by bit, yeah, you're not going to get frustrated because you're not instantly successful but you're going to learn along the way and you're going to develop and you're going to find the point that you're naturally going to end up at. But good, good question and good point. K rocks. <laughs> when I distributed my last CD, I found out that most people did not even have a CD player. Most of oh, mate, t tell me about it. I, I bought a, a record, like a double LP recently from an artist to support them because it's cool. And it's sitting on my shelf over there and I look at it and I love looking at it don't currently own a record player but i like it i like the lighter notes and i like that one half portion yes exactly i uh, love the snow princess ldg uh reached 80 fahrenheit in melbourne florida now in melbourne so melbourne so florida has melbourne but you call it melbourne don't you here in australia we have melbourne and you've got to basically if people people have asked me how do you say melbourne like you Australians, you say it weirdly. Like how do you how do you how do you pronounce Melbourne in Australia? Here's the key: just forget everything after the B and go straight to the end. Melbourne, straight to the end. B N M E L B N. Melbourne. <laughs> and you'll sound exactly like an Australian because that's what we do. We're like screw you, O you. You don't count. Ah, forget about it. Straight to the end. Excuse me. Needed a quick cough. 
Oh, yeah, good point. Smash the like if you would like to like the show. Smash the like. I hope you enjoy these ones. I um, made a lot of the other shows more streamlined, and I realized I kind of missed just having a rant for an hour or two and answering questions and just having a chat. So I'll probably do these about once a month uh, just, to, just to sprinkle it a little bit of that. Uh, yeah, this, these are going to have virtually zero rewatch value, which is why things like GarageBand Weekly, Your Music Live, Happy Hour, I try to keep them to a tight time frame, but sometimes you just got to rant. Uh, Crow on a Wire says, on the other side of covers, I'm mer mustering inspiration for my next tune. See, I, I immediately thought you meant mastering. I'm mastering my next tune, but no, you're mustering. It's like trolloping. No, mustering inspiration for my next tune. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, yeah. Best album of... Tw exactly. This, uh, we're talking about this. There you go. Both of those albums. They're very cool. You're, some more, you're supporting the community. It's doing two things if you buy that album. You're supporting the, uh, the, the Teenage Cancer Trust, which is a, a charity that Russ is very passionate about. And you're supporting the artists who put their work into that, who all donated their time and their music and their energy for that cause. So it, it's only good. It's only good. Oh, yeah, Volume 3. We got more. I know. There, there's a lot of people um, that have been asking, hey, I would have loved to have been involved in that. Can I get, uh, can I get into that? Can I, can I get involved? So I'm sure there will be even more artists that will be interesting. Uh, never say never. There you go. Exactly. Uh, commitment, consistency, and evolving content. That's the three C's of Jade Star. Commitment, consistency, and evolving content. Yeah, and that's the thing. It, it's hard because it's a balancing act, isn't it? Like Jade knows this and I know this. You, you can't do, there's two things you can't do. Be completely static and never change anything. Or we'll, we'll just, you'll just spiral into, you'll get bored and your audience will get bored. And number two is you can't change everything so much that people don't know what to expect. So you have to really sit in between, but being consistent, like committed to it and consistency. I've seen like during the pandemic, a lot of people started things. They started music or they started YouTube channels and I haven't seen anything from them because they had all this enthusiasm and they came out of the gates like bang. And then it got hard or it got challenging and they pulled back or they started getting worse results. So they just stopped because here's the problem, especially if you started during the pandemic, YouTube was at its highest that it's been, both from a monetary and a views point because people were stuck in their houses. They were home watching YouTubes. So yeah, it was really easy to be a successful YouTube content creator three years ago. It's harder now. But guess what? You can't go back in time. We haven't got the Doc Brown time machine yet. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how we go. Hello, Ed B. Metal. Thank you for being here. Good to see you, my friend. Hope you are doing well. Melbourne. Yeah, you could always put it. You could put the U in, Melbourne. <clears throat> but I think it's almost just straight from the B to the N, Melbourne. This is a good question from Mark. How do you deal with recording when you have noisy neighbours? Yeah, and how do you deal with recording when you don't want to be heard by close neighbours? That's probably part two of that question. I get both of these a lot. These days, I'm getting more of the, I'm nervous about recording in front of people. I don't want anyone to hear me. Where do I go? And the answer is usually your car or if your Gary Hub's a parking lot. But yeah, in terms of the noisy neighbour thing, uh, what I tend to find is start at 3am. That's usually when your neighbours are most likely to be asleep and then just rock out. And then they won't be noisy. At least, like, at least get a few takes in before they start banging on your door. But no, but in seriousness, uh, yeah, it, it can be tough because it, it is hard to do. My my go-to back in the day when I needed to isolate myself and I needed to get away from noise, because as you might hear when I'm here, literally I'm, I'm on a road. It's not a major road, but it is a bus route. So there are buses that go past. I don't even hear them anymore. But I'll be listening back to some recording sometime. I'm like, bloody hell, right in the middle of the solo, that bus tried to drive past. <sighs> yeah. So, yeah, that, that can be tough to do. Uh, Walk-in robes. Seriously, these things were designed for recording. And the reason that I love recording on iPad and iPhone and mobile recording is you can take your whole rig somewhere else. Uh, and even, I don't know, if, 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 you, if you're in a studio area and you're using your Mac, the other thing you can do is just move yourself. So if you're using GarageBand on Mac, you're probably aware of this, but you've got Logic Remote. So you can actually control your GarageBand from your, your iPad. So you can take your iPad in there, still be recording on your Mac, but just get a longer cable. Like when I first set up this studio, 
because I was recording and I didn't have a lot of knowledge around reducing like reflections and getting good quality recordings without getting a bunch of noise, I actually set up two big cables and I didn't really punch a hole in the wall. I just kind of fed them through the wall over to there, which is a walk-in robe uh, covered. And then I closed the door there. I surrounded myself with like jackets and coats and, and soft furnishings, hung a blanket on the door and it created this perfect vocal and recording booth. So that's probably the one tip that I'll say there is if you've got a walk-in robe or if you've got a space that's far away from things, especially if it's got lots of soft furnishings in it, that's a good way to go. Uh, other tips, um, leave a letter in your neighbor's letterbox saying that they've won a sweepstakes, but they have to go to uh, somewhere two towns over to collect their million dollars and then wait for them to go and then start your recording. I reckon that might work too. What do you reckon? <laughs> All righty. Uh, yeah, Melbourne, Melbourne, Melbourne. You smashed the like, got to smash it. There you go. Uh, thank you. Yeah, we're all sitting around some table having a chat and a drink. Exactly. That, that, that's the way I look at it. Uh, plus, I do zero preparation. So I love that. And zero editing afterwards. <laughs> Ashley, uh, thank you again. Thank you for your kind donation to the channel. And uh, yeah, I think you've got a song on Your Music Live this week. So look forward to hearing that one coming soon. G'day, David. Did you know if there are any plans to add a notes function to Logic Pro for iPad as a means of keeping notes on tracks and lyrics, etc.? I don't know. I, 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 would, I would hope so because even GarageBand on iOS has a little notes function. But yeah, you're right. It is a bit of a lacking thing. Uh, let's jump over here to the old Logic Pro. Is this the right button? Uh, oh, it is, but it's, why is it not coming through? That'd be right. Uh, with working in the pre-show, why is that not coming in here? Oh, you know why? Because I haven't added it. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, yeah, so in GarageBand, for instance, it's not a great notes feature, but it's kind of handy. I've used it before for putting chord progressions and a few lyrics and things in there. But you might not be aware, but up here under your um, settings, you've got this, you've got Notepad. And you can actually type things in here. So you can go like A minor, G, C, D. And then you can be like chorus. Like it's basic. I met a girl and said, hey, girl. Uh, and yeah, the cool thing about that is, especially if you're collaborating, that gets saved with the project. And it means if you're sending it between people, they can jump in here and they can go, oh, I wonder if there's any notes in here. They can go to the notepad and go, oh yeah, there you go. <clears throat> so for whatever, and we do have a notepad in the Mac version of Logic Pro, I believe. I'm 90% sure. But unfortunately, where you would expect to see something similar here, uh, we got nothing. So there's no, no notes section, nothing that we can actually add in here. Now, you can, you can name your section. So if you were using, if you were using, if we customize the track header... It's been a while. It's been a while since I did this. I've got to remember where everything's at. There. So you can you can have markers. So as you can see here, I've got markers in this project. And I've got the different time signatures there and different markers. So you could put notes in markers. But look, it's a bit of a hack and it's not really the same thing. If you want to like maybe take some mixed notes or you're collaborating and you want to share the chord progression or something like that, you kind of need to do it externally. I would love uh, to see that as a change. So yeah, good good point, good question. Haven't heard anything uh, about another update from Apple at this stage because they had their big 1.1 update and you would have thought if they were going to add a feature like that, they would have stuck it in the 1.1 update. But I'll, I'll add it to the ever-growing list of things that uh, if Apple ever do ask me for feedback, which they do, to their credit, once every year or two, <laughs> then I'll definitely uh, provide that as well. But uh, yeah, this day, this point in time, Nothing there. Uh, thank you from Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, Team Puerto Rico Racing. Love your vibe music and help. Cheers from Puerto Rico. Thank you for being here. Appreciate you. And uh, yes, if you are here and you do have any questions, by the way, uh, just, just throw, your, throw your questions out here. But if you want to make sure I see them and know they're a question, just um, put, a, put a big Q in front of it and that'll help me out. Uh, g'day to Gordon Lee Weaver. I'd love to know what folks around here have found works for building an audience for your music, not just your subs YouTubers. Yeah, look, this is a great question. Because let, let, let's, let's rip off the honesty band-aid to start with. 
the vast majority of us in this community, and I don't think there's anything wrong with this, the vast majority of people that know my music are other people that are creating music. And it does become this kind of tight knit community, which is great, but how do you get to the normies? How do you get to the regular folks that aren't necessarily interested in creating music, but they might want to listen to your music? I don't know because I haven't got there yet, to be honest. So if I'm really honest, I don't know yet. I do always recommend there, if, if you are trying to work out like a launch strategy for music, there is a guy called Damien Keys, and he's my go-to. Whenever I get questions like this, I send people over to Damien because he actually has some great videos about this exact topic. So uh, if we go here to Damien Keys, this one here, the single release 23 day plan. So this is a, a video and I won't play it here because I want to take Damien's copyright, but he's a cool dude, British dude, uh, knows his stuff, has worked with bands and is an expert in independent music and promotion of indie music. So his 23 day uh, plan I'm sure he's got a version for 2024 coming out really soon. He goes through all of this sort of stuff, all the stuff that I don't do. So the, the, the short answer is, Gordon, that it takes a lot of work because instead of doing what I do, which is I want to get a song out, distro kid, release song, maybe I'll do it in a week's time and maybe I'll put some posts on Facebook or whatever. But if you, you listen to what Damien has to say, he's talking about playlist submission. He's talking about promoting out in groups and, and promoting through uh, like live events and uh, through your, your own town and, and doing physical media, flyers and things like There's a lot of options that you have there. Unfortunately, it, it is hard. It's hard to do and there's a lot of ways that you can do it. And maybe, maybe it's something that I need to do because... I, uh, I've never really tried to sort of break through, I guess, and get a song or get my music out there more so than just putting my music out there. And the people that know me and know what I do like my music, and that's totally cool. But at the same time, how are people going to discover my music? If they don't already know me and my music, how are they going to discover it? The other thing that I've seen work well and be successful for folks is tapping into memes and current events and things. Because... If you can get your song, obviously, you know, used in TikTok, and that's the sort of classic one, but if you can be writing a song that's about a current thing that's popular. So if I was smart, I would write a song right now, a diss track about how stupid Stanley Cups are and how anyone that sp spends $75 and lines up in the freaking snow to buy an insulated mug that's the same as every other insulated mug that you can buy out there for 10 bucks from Kmart is a bit of a tool. So a bit of one of these. <laughs> So yeah, you could play into that because that's what's popular. That's what everyone's talking about right now. Uh, not even the good Stanley Cup, the other Stanley Cup. So that's that's the other thing is if you can if you can work around the memes, then you can get the normies on board with your music. That's what I think anyway. Ed B's got some crap metal metal. See crap weather. I was uh, crap metal heading your way. <clears throat> oh dear. Um, yeah, and that's the thing. Like, it's it's such a hard, it's such a fine balancing act, isn't it? Because the worst thing you can do is the play my fire beat method, which is go to every group and every community, walk in there, dump on them, play my fire beat, my music's cool, check me out, and then leave. Because no one cares about that. You've been in those groups, haven't you? Someone will come in, they've joined the group, they say joined group yesterday, and then they're pumping and promoting their music till, till they get banned by the moderator and then they leave and that's not going to work either but yeah as midnight banner says networking is different it's called social media for a reason so if you're going to do social media you got to do it right which means you can't can't be one way you can't just be jamming your music down people's throat you've got to be listening to people getting their feedback getting their comments and uh doing that all right uh au session notes on the app store there you go you got another one you got another uh you got another suggestion there there's so yeah there's there's an app for that uh mark says i could record vo record vocals in the car it's recording acoustic guitar tracks give me a problem mm. yeah that's it with that noise there's a damn pierre peter uh recording multiple takes and com com comping the parts without noise yeah and look the only other thing i'd say mark is direct in can sometimes if you've got to if you've got to pick up on your acoustic Direct in can work. You can buy those little pickups as well that you can add to an acoustic if you don't have one. It's not quite the same sound, but you do definitely get less noise than miking up an acoustic. 
It's Mr. Josh Gates. Hello to you and Scars and Shadows. Look at all these cool people coming out. Oh, look at that. It's the Lily Pillies. Hello, Manny. I hope you're doing well. What's the best cure for a hangover? <laughs> Not drinking heavily the night before. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Baraka, mate. Baraka gives you back your BB bounce. No, I've, I'm, I'm old school. I'm water. Uh, and unfortunately, when I forget to have water before I go to bed, um, yeah, the dehydration is what does it. That's the, that's the main part of the hangover is dehydration. So the more water you can consume before you, you, before you pass out or go to bed, uh, yeah, the, the better you'll do. Uh, or hair of the dog. Exactly. Hair of the dog. Is that, is that a common phrase? Do people know that? Hair of the dog. It's hair of the dog that bit you is the full version of it. And it's basically saying, yeah, if you're suffering from having too much booze, just have another drink. You'll be fine. Tomato juice. There you go. It's all coming out. Fresh pot of coffee. Uh, another hangover. We've got some, gr <laughs> we got some great ideas here. <laughs> Stay drunk. Oh, mate. I, I love it when we get there. A uh, little bit of time and hydration. Exactly. Hydration is the key. Yeah, how good are Jade's walking videos? They're, they're, they're too good. What do I mean by that? Well, they're, they're so good that they should have an audience about 100 times what they have. So Jade's actually, the, Jade's the opposite of me. Jade's production quality has grown <laughs> faster than her audience. Mine's gone the other way. My audience grew fast and my production quality stayed down here. <laughs> <laughs> and my audience didn't really grow fast. I have a lot of subscribers, but that's a vanity metric. That's got nothing to do with how many people actually watch and engage with my content. So keep that in mind. Uh, k Rocks says, I'm sorry, Kihaolo. I'm lucky that I live in an area where everyone loves music. We take turns blasting out whatever we want and nobody complains, unless we are complaining that it's not loud enough. Hey, turn it up, man. Yeah, totally. I love it. Four more pints and a kebab. There you go. Kebab. Do you have kebabs in, in other places as well? We call them gyros here in Australia. Uh, although these days I get a falafel because um, I'm an AJ. But falafels, it's still the same sort of thing. It's still smothered in garlic sauce and uh, still fried and it's still got the lettuce and oh, it's still delicious. Anyway. <laughs> but yes, kebabs, gyros. Community radio. Yeah, so Manny has done a great job with this. Uh, also who have, who I saw are just starting to get back together and create new music, uh, is Andy and Stu, the Indigo Sunsets, uh, and the Lily Pillies. So yeah, if you if you start getting played on community radio, there's a lot of people that are devoted to like indie music, but they're maybe not the techiest. So that's one way to do it. Uh, Manny's also played like played out, played gigs, actually getting out there and doing things can actually help as well because you'll engage with people that are not necessarily just the, uh, look, I'll say it, the online nerds like us. So yeah, that's another good another good tip there from uh, from the Lula Pullers. Uh, or a sound library, a lot of background music you hear is actually licensed free from a library. If 200 people hear it, but one subs and it's worth it. Yeah, you can. Uh, that's the other thing. What I've seen people that have been successful, they go to a podcast or a community that they really like that might need, say, a theme song, or they might do a meme song based around that community. So if you love a hockey podcast, then why not make a cool song about hockey or about that show and submit it to them? Uh, look look at um, uh, oh, mentally blanking now here. Cronk song. Mark Lovell, our mate Cronk song. Uh, so Mark sent music into Your Music Live. Sure, everyone's done that. He's had his music, um, he, yeah, he's, he's had his music uh, and he, we'd play his songs. And then one day he, uh, he said, oh, I got something for you, completely unsolicited, out of the blue. And you know what rolled on in to my, um, to my inbox? It was this. Your music, your music. So that was completely out of the blue and you better believe that that was amazing because I'm like, I didn't even think about the fact that I needed a song for, for your music live opening, but I got one because Mark just said, here, have this, I made something for you. So something like that can actually be super powerful. I don't, you don't, like, not the sucking up stuff. Not the, oh, because I get other emails as well from people like saying, oh, I really like what you do. Is, can, can I do something for you? Can I be an intern or can I support you? Can I do video editing for you? And I say, yeah, sure. Like just you do something, send it to me and I'll tell you if it's the sort of thing I need. Crickets. So nothing comes back through. So yeah, it, it can be tough. <laughs> if there was an anti-social media, I would have all the followers.
yeah, I, I, I hear you. I hear you for sure. Uh, I'm probably, I'm going to scroll down uh, further and uh, try and find any other questions. So, uh, hello to you. Yes, um, electrolytes is also good. Exactly. Electrolytes is what you lose as well. Gatorade has electrolytes, uh, water. Uh, if you want to see the Rubens, I uh, had a few too many. I went to see the Rubens. Oh, okay. Nice. Very cool. Uh, yes, Tool are my spirit animal. They're my favorite and my best. Very cool stuff. Uh, most art. Have I tried FL Studio Mobile? I haven't. Should I? Is that something that I should check out? I have been meaning to try and do a few different things. And I've heard good things about the old loops of fruit from uh, Thomas Christ. He uses the desktop version. But I've never, of all, I've, I've used a lot of different, uh, a lot of different apps, but I've never used Fruit. Is that because it's not available? Is it an actual app? Oh yeah, FL Studio Mobile. It's 20 bucks. All right, let's, let's jump over here. I don't think I'm going to buy it on the spot because I always regret when I do that. So it's $20 for the basic version. In-app purchases means there's probably add-ons. It's only got the one picture there. I think FL Studio don't really do a great job promoting their product. Jade, have you ever covered FL? If anyone has, Jade would have. But I don't, uh, yeah. Uh, short answer, no. Uh, probably because I don't make a lot of electronic music. And GarageBand and Logic Pro work better for me because I use guitars and, and I record vocals and the like, more so than anything else. But yeah, if you're using, um, if you're using electronic music mostly, very good. Uh, when, uh, David Stevens, get out of you. When recording in iOS, I've developed the habit of flattening all settings, compressor, room travel, etc., so as not to freeze those settings into my recording. Am I daft? Uh, no, probably just doing something that's not really that necessary. So this is a really good question, actually, David. So first of all, no, not daft. There is no, there is no bad questions. Um, in fact, the only question, the only stupid question, is the one you don't ask. Because if you're, if you've got it in your head, other people probably do too. Here's the thing: if you're in, uh, if you're in iOS, let's say, we'll go back, go back to GarageBand, uh, just because it's a simpler one to explain. Well, that's that's not GarageBand, that's Safari, GarageBand, boom. All right. So here's the thing: let's just say that I'm here in GarageBand and I'm recording in a vocal track. I hit the plus button here and I set up my vocal track. So I'll come here and I'll just go boom. Let's turn this on. And at the moment, I got clean, but most of the times I'll, I'll use like the lead vocal setting. So if I'm hearing you correctly, what you're saying here, David, is that you, I'm just going to pop your question out of the way, that you're going, well, I'll, I'll turn all these down and put these all back to their zero setting and not have any of these effects on because I don't want these to be baked in when I record. Here's the cool thing. They won't be. So the way that recording works in the digital space is if you're recording, even if you have every plugin in the world on there when you're recording, those are not actually recorded into your sound to the point where if you go in and you've got a recording that you've done, so let, let, let's show you this. Let's show you this in real time. So if I got this one here, this is a guitar that I recorded and I had all these things already in there when I recorded the guitar. So it sounds like this. So I recorded this through Tone Bridge. I had this effect EQ on. I have the wider plug-in on. But here's the cool thing. I turn all them off. And we go back and listen to it. It's just a it's just a flat guitar. And it's the same with your vocals. It's the same with everything. So if I'm if I'm hearing you correctly with your question, yeah, you're probably just spending time doing that that you don't have to. Because even if you record it with a bunch of reverb, a bunch of compression, a bunch of EQ, it's not going to bake that in. And the, the reason that I think we have this in our heads is in the old days it did. So if you were recording in a studio and you're recording through a compressor, through an EQ unit, that is going to bake that into the sound. And that was the way we did it in the old days. And because you very rarely would you bother then rerouting it and looping it back through an EQ or a compressor or a reverb unit afterwards, you'd probably just record it on the way in because a lot of us didn't have gear that had a lot of sends and receives to be able to do that. We're, we're fortunate now that in the digital world, we do and you can. So hopefully that uh, that answers the question. But yeah, very, very good question. Excellent, excellent stuff. Thanks for asking. Have many hair of the dogs. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't drink. My, my daughter says to me, uh, I'm not going to drink. When I get older, I'm like, yeah, just don't. It's not actually that fun. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest, it is at the time, but it doesn't, long term, really doesn't 
do much, does it? Yeah. And it's just, it's like anything you, yeah, you get, you get a little bit over it over time. Uh, hello, Rita. Hope you are doing well. Uh, wish I had a question. <laughs> yeah. You, so, see, I think you asked, if you didn't, if you don't know, um, Princess came into the community, what, year ago, year and a half, two years, had all the questions, asked everything, learnt everything, and now she's great. So she doesn't need to ask questions anymore. No good? Okay. Yeah, look, I, again, maybe that's why I've never had the desire to, because maybe I've never seen anyone use it successfully and do good things with it. Uh, it's the pits. Well, there you go. Uh, oh, yeah, you, are you using Cubases now? Maybe. Fruity Loops is about as good as any door. The fact that you uh, buy it lifetime free. Yeah, well, look, that's good. Uh, and it'll work for some people. It probably works for the sort of music you do, uh, Midnight Bandit, I would, ima I would imagine. It was a great question. Yeah, thanks Thanks for asking it. really does good. Uh, they still make Fruity Loops Midnight. Do they make Fruit Loops, the cereal? It, do, you, do you call it Fruit Loops in other parts of the world? Here we have Fruit Loops, which are those, you know, that pecan or cockatoo. What is it? Is it a pecan? No. Toucan, that's the word. Toucan Sam, uh, eat Fruit Loops. Part of this balanced breakfast, and it's like a picture of sugary cereal with cow juice. <laughs> yeah, not the best. Not the best. All right. Um, yeah, I did. Cool. That's good. Um, so yeah, short answer is don't don't waste your time. Don't bother doing it because you can change. It. Unless here's the thing unless you want to use it to your advantage. So maybe some people really like having that completely flat sound going in. In which case, if, you, if you're in GarageBand, uh, just use the clean. So instead of using any of those, if you go plus, audio recorder, just go more sounds, fun, and clean. That'll do every, oh, I'm on the wrong screen. <laughs> that wouldn't have helped show you anything. I'll do it again. Go to your plus and go audio recorder, more sounds, fun, clean. So if you start with a clean sound, you can do that. But the other thing is, I actually like recording through a little bit of overdrive. I think that gives that gravelly sound that I like hearing in my headphones. I like recording with a little delay, a little slapback Beatles style delay. I think it just helps keep my vocals in tune. And I like a little bit of spacey reverb. I don't know, but, but your, your mileage will vary. But the good news is in the digital realm, you can do it either way. You can record completely clean or you can record with every effect under the sun and uh, it won't really affect the end result because you can change it after the fact. Hello, Gary Hubs. I hope you are doing well. I had pizza last night. Every time I have pizza, I think about Gary Hubs because I dropped my pizza slice. I dropped my pizza slice. Uh, question from Rena. I used Song Surgeon on a demo a few times to split a song, change keys and tempo. It's completely lossless. It's great to have to buy and Windows for the real deal. That's cool. Um, is, is that a question or is that a, a, a suggestion? Uh, Song Surgeon. I've not heard of Song Surgeon. Um, or if I have, I've forgotten that I have. Let's, let's see what it does. Because it's always interesting to explore. Version of Audio Slowdowner. I love that it's called an Audio Slowdowner. <laughs> uh, there you go. So it's available for Mac and for Windows. Uh, Song Surgeon released in 2007 from its humble beginnings, grown to one of the most popular and versatile tools. Okay, so it's, yeah, so you basically can change. So it's, it's, it, there are other apps that do this same sort of thing. So I use an app called Audio Stretch, uh, which does kind of the same thing. I had someone that was uh, recording a cover of a, I can't remember the artist, some, one of those great singers, I can't remember who it was, but she was a female vocalist. And I was playing this song to her and she's like, oh, I want to record a cover in GarageBand. I got this backing track, but I, I, I need it to just be two tones lower. I just can't quite hit those high notes. And I threw it into Audio Stretch on the iPad and I went boop, boop, and just sent it back out. And it's really good. Like the quality is actually surprisingly good. You're always going to get some artifacting with that sort of thing, especially speeding up and slowing down. In fact, especially slowing down. So speeding up a sample... And again, I won't go into detail on this because most of you already know it, but if you've got questions, you can ask me in the future. But if you are speeding up a sample, you're basically taking two things and smooshing them together into one. That will give you a very similar quality. But if you're slowing down a sample, you're actually stretching it out. You're adding things that aren't there before. And as good as algorithms are now at working out what should be in between, that's where you get that kind of choppy sound because if you try and slow down an audio file, 
there's samples there that just aren't there and it has to work out and make up what's there. Whereas if you take something, squish it down, you're just removing samples, which is a different way to go. There you go. Uh, oh, so do the same thing. Oh, so the question is completely lossless. Um, no. So by the very nature of what I was just saying there, you are going to get some sort of artifact. And the only real way to do that, if you've got, say, an audio file that's a backing track and you want it to go down a few tones or you want it to slow down by um, 10 BPM, you're always not going to get the same exact pristine quality of the original because it's having to use an algorithm to do that. Uh, some of them are good these days, but not perfect. So... Yeah, uh, that's an old ad, Pete, is it? Yeah. Oh, hang on, what, what was I talking about? An old ad, Fruit Loops? Part of this complete balance breakfast. Hmm. Um, yeah, uh, lossless for iOS. Audio Stretch does a decent job. Um, let me show you Audio Stretch. I'll see if I can give you a quick demo. It's about 20 bucks to buy. There's a free light version as well, as you can see there, Audio Stretch Lite. But this is, it, it's a very basic interface. It doesn't do a heap of stuff. But if we import a file, let's just go browsing. Browsing, browsing, browsing. Go to audio share. I'm sure I've got something here. Yeah, let's go grab this instrumental version of For the Birds. And throw that in there. So as it stands, sounds like this. Well, it's the full version with the, with the birds. We'll go through. So what I can do with this is let's say that I can't sing this high anymore, which is pretty true. What I would do is I would drop this down and let's just take it down, say five semitones and... But again, it, things won't quite sound right because especially for real instruments, you're often pitching them like a low E of a, of a guitar. If suddenly it's a low... B, it's going to sound very different. But yeah, you can you can pitch it up to to. And as a general rule, pitching up and speeding up for the reasons I said before are going to sound better. So we can increase the speed here to say uh, one and a half times. Let's go. Um, let's go chipmunk. Ready. You get the point. So, uh, yeah, have a look at Audio Stretch. You can get the free version, see if it works for you. The Fruit Loops uh, shred the... Oh, I know. Yeah, the Fruit Loops, they're not good. Um, my children like them, but they don't get them. Toucan Sam, exactly. Frankenberry, what is it? Choc Choczilla? No. Uh, Count, Count Chocula, uh, Captain Crunch, not Captain, Captain Crunch. Barry Glenn, hello to you. Goodbye to you. Hope you do it well, mate. Uh, yeah, there you go. Cap Captain Crunch. They are, uh, they're, yeah, they're, they're not good. All the different colors. That's the thing, isn't it? They're, they're not actually different fruit flavors. All of them kind of sound the same, don't they? Yeah. We're tackling the big topics here. I, I love these shows because we talk, we talk about um, you know, recording methods. We talk about apps that you can use to stretch out your songs. And then we talk about breakfast cereal because uh, why not? It's just the way we, we way way we wall around here. Uh, I'm going to take a quick break. So uh, we're going to send you over to an advertisement. Maybe it's for Fruity Loops. We don't know. So uh, yeah, if you have YouTube Premium, you're not seeing an ad right now. Uh, but if you don't, you're seeing an ad and we'll, uh, we'll continue with the show. We've got a maximum of another 57 minutes. So I'm more than happy to, uh, to answer any further questions like this one. <coughs> from Princess LDG, do you think that the M3 Mac Mini will come out in the spring? If not, I'm getting the M2 Mac Mini Pro 32 gig RAM, one SSD in February. It would be nice to get the newest thing though. Yes, I'm in the exact same position as you, Princess. I am uh, waiting to see if we get a Mac Mini M3 because what I need, I don't need the studio, I don't think, or maybe I'll get the studio, but I, yeah, I don't want to buy it and then it suddenly come out as an M3 because I want my next computer to be the desktop that I use for the next five years. So the current one I have is the Mac Mini M1 8 gigabyte with 256. It's fine, it does the job, it's doing the stream right now and it's doing a pretty good job. But I need, I need a new machine at some stage in the not too distant future. So I, I'm going to try and hold off. 
I'm going to try and see if I can get through the next six months. If we don't see anything by like WWDC pretty much of 2024, uh, I'll probably just bite the bullet and get an M2 because there's not going to be a huge difference. Uh, so yeah, you did. You finally had a question and I didn't really give you much of an answer. <laughs> Not really. Uh, David Stevens says, for key change without changing tempo, I used Audacity. For it. Yeah, Audacity is great. Don't underestimate Audacity. So I'm putting the air conditioner on. It's getting really warm in here. Don't underestimate Audacity. It is a great platform. Uh, it is free, open source. It's a heap of tools. Not as easy to use as something like GarageBand or Logic Pro, um, but it has a heap of tools. And don't forget, you can also change pitch and, and tempo in Logic Pro. It does a decent job of doing that a good good point and audacity is available on uh, windows and mac as well what's my method for getting a good slap back delay for vocals i'm so basic on this jerry <laughs> i use a very simple delay uh the one tip i'll give you additional tip for for vocals and for delay is if your delay plugin has a high pass filter Playing around with that can actually be really interesting because sometimes you, you delay for a slapback. In fact, let's go let's go to the go to the example because I think I showed this recently in GarageBand. We'll we'll come back to the old G Band here on iOS. I'm pretty sure you're onto Logic Pro these days anyway, but same same concept here. So let's grab this guitar again. We'll solo it there. Let's put its plugins back on. Oh, that sounds so cool. Now, I know this is a guitar and not vocals, but it's what I'm working with at the moment. If we add a delay to this, so if you just use the stock delay, which is the track Echo here, the one thing that you can play around with in this one is the colour. So you're going to get a different kind of delay. So this has got a quarter note delay on by default. Let's take a listen. But sometimes you'll want that to have a really bright kind of sound to your delay. Sometimes you want it a little bit more, a little more subtle. So that's the thing you can use with that one. Uh, the repeat, so how many times it repeats. So I like to turn that down for a slap back. So if I want a really quick slap back, I'd probably put this to like a 16th triplet and then uh, go. Turn it up. So yeah, so that's kind of the thing. Experiment, I know that doesn't give you a specific answer, but experimenting with the amount of repeat, I tend to turn it down for a slap back because you don't want it to go da 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 You kind of want it da 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 And then look at the, the, the colour there. The other thing is if you're using a delay plugin like the Apple AU delay, which is the one over here, also free. I like to demo this stuff with free because obviously you can use paid plugins and do all sorts of things with them. But this one here gives you a lot more vis visual control over it. So you can actually like dial it in. And I don't know, if you're more of a visual person, you can see how that's gone out like half a second if we play it here. So you can actually get a visualization of how many repeats you're getting and over what time. And then you can like bring it back and sort of see there that if you wanted a really quick one, you're getting a really weird sound there, aren't you? But yeah, you can experiment with that one. So I did a video on this one recently and you can even do a ping pong with this, which is cool. So you can do a, a ping pong delay to sort of go ba -na -na -da -na -na, and that can work well for some slap back. For that kind of all around your head kind of sound. So that's, that's a couple of things to consider uh, and things that I do when I want a nice uh, slap back delay. And again, sorry, that was on, um, on guitar, not vocals, but exact same thing applies. Uh, Gary mentioned that I forgot that naan flat bread would make good. I had the best pizza. So as I mentioned before, I know, I'm sorry, but I'm a vegetarian. And I had this um, paneer pizza. It was like an Indian paneer pizza. It had this really nice sort of sauce swirl on it and this nice baked paneer. And oh my goodness, it was good. Paneer is like that um, 
sort of baked cottage cheese that you get uh, in India, like palak paneer and, and sag paneer and those sort of dishes. So if you don't have chicken or beef, uh, paneer is delicious with your Indian food. Uh, pizza on a cast iron. Oh, how, yeah, how good is um, wood-fired? Wood-fired pizza is the best. I love it. On those big paddles, sh shove it in, literally two minutes, pull it out really quick, really good. All righty, uh, I'm scrolling down. Uh, can you make a cheaper mic sound with with proper? Can you make a cheaper mic sound good with proper EQing? Oh, good question. Um, yes, no, um, yeah. Look, I think it's not even really about EQing to be honest. A lot of people. Uh, here's the thing. I, I think if you have a really if you have a really cheap microphone where the actual sound you're capturing is distorted like the pickup on the microphone's no good, the wiring's no good, it's really noisy, it's got really bad like handling noise, like when you touch it, it goes I don't think there's really any way around that. But I also think you don't need a $400 Shure SM7B to get good sounds. I think a lot of it comes down to a couple of things. Your microphone technique is really important. Some people get way too much up on the microphone and that doesn't sound any good. Some people are too far away. So doing the, doing the that, I know it's weird, but getting it, doing a, doing a little rigid edge sign and putting that, when you're singing, that's about a good distance. A lot of people try to eat the microphone and that creates that distorted sound. And especially in a cheaper microphone, it won't work well. The other key thing is your input gain. So whatever you're plugging it into, make sure you're getting the input gain right. And again, most people turn it up too loud. They put their input gain up too loud because they do it when they do their test. One, two, three, test, one, two, three. For instance, I've got the input gain set at the moment, like a level of 33 dB here on my Rodecaster Pro, because when I talk, I know that the maximum I'm gonna to get to is going to not clip. However, if I start singing and talking, yeah, you know what I mean? So a lot of times people set their input gain too loud. And then when they sing, they sing at twice the volume of their speaking voice and you get distortion and you get bad sounds. So that's my kind of two tips for, especially for cheaper microphones, is to turn things down and to get further away. And people think, oh, but my sound's going to be all washed out and faded and stuff. No, because that's where in your mix you can add in compression. You can add in EQ. You can not fix it in the mix, but you want a, a sound. You can't take away distortion and oversaturation that you're going to get if you're too close and too loud, but you can add that back in a lot easier. So go on the side of being lower, especially if you're using a cheaper gear. It'll also reduce your noise floor and not pick up as much background noise. Uh, there you go. Love Audacity. Been using it for 20 years. You're not even 20. How have you been? Did you start using it when you were five, Coldacre? Uh, all right. Uh, I have a new MacBook Pro M3. I bet the M4 will be out in a few months. Well, yes, that's the thing. It is weird. Uh, I did think that by now Apple would start doing overall updates of their gear instead of this sort of... But I think a lot of it's supply chain issue. If, uh, if you don't know the background, <laughs> Apple uh, have an interesting relationship with China at the moment and they are trying to diversify and get more production done out of India for a lot of their uh, chips and things. But it's going to be a long way, a long haul. And uh, so many new chips and new gear being made. Plus Apple are actually doing decent things around... Um, the environmental impacts of their processes. So things like the Apple Watch being completely carbon neutral and stuff like that. So it is making it harder to produce. So I guess getting all the M3s and all the M4s out at once on all the different models is um, pretty tough, pretty tough to do. Hello, Leela. Hope you are doing well. Uh, I uh, appreciate you. One of our wonderful moderators. I have had Dell laptops in the past. They are all in landfill now. Um, no, Dell, Dell are fine. Dell, HP, Lenovo, they're all middle of the range. They all do a job and they're all fine. I know, how good is Palak Paneer? Delicious Palak Paneer with a bit of naan, maybe some roti. Just great. Love it. Um, I hate my mic. Uh, Rode K2. There you go. I have the Rode NTK. I uh, always just use my pod mic. Yeah, I need to get a pod mic. No, never, never. Uh, can I say, Michael, excuse me a moment. My apologies. Uh, can I save my GarageBand music to Apple Music? I think I used to be able to do when I had a computer in iTunes. Is it possible on iPad Pro? Great question, Michael. The short answer is no. 
So yeah, it's it's a pain in the ass because if you've got your music, and say you've got a, a song here in GarageBand, so let's uh, let's go over to my GarageBand and show you. So what you're wanting to do, I'm assuming, is all right. Here's my song. I've finished it. I've done my final mix down. I'm going to jump out here and go to my recent. And now I'm going to whoop, not do that. I'm going to export this. And wouldn't it be great if I could share this as a song, mix it down as either a wave or an MP3 or an M4A file, and then instead of just sharing it here, shouldn't I be able to to save this to Apple Music, like to my music app on my iPhone or my iPad, so that I can play it? <sighs> Yeah, and the answer is no. It's a pain in the ass. So what do I do instead? I use Audio Share, to be honest. So I will export this. Um, I'll just show you this real quick. So it's not the same, but if you want to have the ability to just play, because I like doing this because I like listening to my own songs. So say I'm working on an EP or an album, I like to have all my songs in one place so that I can just listen to them. So I'd go to Audio Share here. I'm going to save it into my Audio Share. File doesn't exist. What have I done wrong? I've messed it up. <laughs> All right. Assume that worked. Assume I selected audio share and it went there. Not quite sure what I've done wrong there. Uh, but if we come back to audio share, and audio share, if you don't know, is a... All right, there you go. Uh, is an app. It's about two or three dollars to buy, but it is the go-to app for all things um, audio playback, audio storage, audio sharing. So, for instance, here's my recent song choices, and this is like all of my different versions of it that I'd exported and that I'd trimmed and uh, that I'd played with. <laughs> I don't know why I have so many versions of it there. Uh, but yeah, you can save everything in here. Here's this loop that I made. Yeah. So yeah, you can save it in here and you've got easy, easy ability to just play it straight from in here. So yeah, I know that doesn't answer you. Well, it does answer your question. You can't. But if you want an alternative, uh, get yourself audio share. And you can even, as you saw there, you can create folders. So it's not as you know pretty as using the interface. But you can see here I've got like my EP, like all the files for my EP Mayhem. Uh, and I've got, uh, which, which ended up being called Maybe. Uh, I've got my song, new, um, I'm on the wrong channel again. There we go. Uh, so yeah, so you've got folders here. So you can separate things out and you can play them directly from in here. So audio share is good, but um, no. And you're right, you used to be able to do it. What you'd have to do is send it over to a Mac or a PC, add it to a playlist in iTunes, which none of that exists anymore, and then sync your device using, I used to use that method to sync files to my iPad, my old, old, old iPad, when I used to do the hockey. I used to do the um, the audio, the announcing, the PA announcing at the hockey. So I used to use a similar approach to do that. But alas, can no longer do it. It's a bit like the um, a bit like the old uh, headphone jack. Like, why why do they take these things away from us? Why why? Uh, another tip for for mic use for Mark: don't sing timidly. Go for it. I don't mean belting all the time, but uh, timid singing will show. Yes, spot on. Have a quick drink. Yeah, spot on. Uh, so, uh, yeah, when you're singing, you can hear it both in the recording, but also kind of in the quality of the sound you get if you are being timid, if you're not going for it. And I've always said, yeah, just sing like no one's listening. Just just go hard because it will help your pitching of your notes because if you sing like this, you'll probably not quite hit any notes at all. If you sing like this, you will probably miss some notes, but when you do, it'll be spectacular. Know what I mean? So you might as well go for it because, yeah, if you're going to miss something, miss it spectacularly and then try again. And the same thing, the audio quality that comes through, if you're pulling within yourself, you're going to hear it in the end result. So another good tip from Mr. Mark Bro. What format do I use on my song to put with a lyric video? MP4 is a video mode or wave? Um, wave. So good question. Whenever you are creating a video in whatever you're using, even if you're going to encode it as a MP4 file, which is a video file, always import the audio as a WAV file, not as an M4A, not as an MP3, not as any compressed audio file. Why is that? Audio compression 
by its very nature, will squash your sound. And the way that compression works is it finds frequencies that aren't being used or are not being used very much in the song, and it removes them. So you end up reducing the overall dynamic range of your recording. So if you've got something with some really quiet parts and some really loud parts, it kind of smushes that together. Or some high frequencies and some low frequencies, it smushes that together. So yes, Every video format, apart from full resolution uncompressed, which are massive and nobody uses, will compress the audio as well as the video. But give it the best chance by putting a WAV file, an uncompressed 44.1 or 48 kilohertz, 16-bit minimum, preferably 24 or 32-bit WAV file, and put that into it. So whether you're using LumaFusion or iMovie or whatever you're using to edit your video, make sure that if you're adding your songs, so say you're making a lyric video, you've got all your video footage, you add that song file, make sure it's uncompressed, an uncompressed WAV file. You turn 52 next month, uh, 52 months or 52 in dog years or what? <laughs> Something like that. Um, let's see. Uh, yes, lots of youngsters around. I know. The numbers are right, just not the order. Oh, but um, shh, I like it. Uh, yes, it, it is a pain. It is a pain that they removed that. Don't like it. Don't like it. I know. The headphone jack. Why? Do you know what the headphone jack thing is? I'm going to rant on this for a sec. The headphone thing is the race to thin. And look, hey, we, 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 all, we all want to be a bit thinner sometimes. But... The, the desire for these companies to make their products so thin, I don't get it. Like, I'm going to, if I pick up my iPad right now and we take a look at this, like, that's, that's too thin. I don't need it to be this thin. If you said to me, I'll give you a second USB-C port and a headphone jack, but it's going to cost you an extra two millimeters of thickness, you're going to go from, what, eight mil to a centimeter thick. I would take that in a heartbeat, in a flash, in a flash ROM. But for whatever reason, yeah, these companies think that we just want thinner and thinner and thinner at the behest of removing things. Now, I get it. I know why they've removed it. I know that they're never coming back because it's a very old technology. It's an analog technology. It's not really compliant with their digital everything strategy. Having this hole, it creates a vulnerability as well. That's why I've got videos about digging crud out of your headphone jack as well as out of your lightning port. So yeah, I get all of that. But I still, it still just annoys me. Because I'm, when I'm out and about and I'm creating and I've got my iPad or now my iPhone, because I'm now using the iPhone 15, which has the USB-C, I don't ever have my USB-C headphones or a USB-C to, to headphone adapter. And I could, it wouldn't be hard for me to, but almost out of principle, I don't. Because I'm like, this should work better. And I end up trying to do something audio wise and plugging in my like Bluetooth AirPods and we're well, not plugging in, but using them instead. And if you've used these before, these are great. For personal listening, these are great. For listening to audio that you need to actually analyze and hear what's going on, not so good. Microphones on these are like what, what we say with a camera, we call it a potato. So what, what's, what's the microphone equivalent of a potato? Uh, something that sounds polystyrene. <laughs> Does anyone else have that thing where when you touch polystyrene foam, it just <laughs> sends shivers down your spine and it just makes you feel horrible? I do. All righty. Yes, we're talking birthdays. We've got 25-year-olds. We've got 34-year-olds. Uh, when is a door not a door? Uh, when is a door not a door? Uh, when it stands on a fountain and says, I am the Lizard King. I don't know. Uh, see, Jim Morrison? Yeah? No? People are strange when you're a stranger. That's what I've heard. Uh, like the guy across the street from me can't carry a tune in a bucket. <laughs> But he has so much fun belting it out. Gotta love it. Absolutely. Yeah, we don't all need to be professionals and experts and stuff, do we? Absolutely. All right. Blinky Bill or Fat Cat? Shouldn't it be Fat Cat or Humphrey? If you're gonna, if you're gonna do the, if you're gonna make me uh, decide between the two, like big cat-based, bear-based, life-size thing. I don't know. I, I would have thought that you'd go Fat Cat or um. Fat Cat or Humphrey. So um, for those that don't know, for the uneducated, <laughs> let's let's educate you on some stuff that's completely unrelated. Oh, no, you know what I did? You want to see something funny? <laughs> I see. 
food for fat cat and it gave me this. It gave me pictures of fat cats. Oh, is it, is, if I do it all one word, is that going to work? Oh, no, it's, it's got, so fat cat, we'll go fat cat. Uh, there you go, Fat Cat and Friends, Australian television show. Let's go with this. So this was like a bit of a fever dream thing. Um, in fact, if we go to the images, that's probably Fat Cat uh, Australian TV show. So Fat Cat was this guy, right? Fat Cat. He was like a life-size cat. He was fat. Wouldn't be able to be called that these days. It would be um, uh, obese feline these days. But no, it was Fat Cat. And human person talks to fat cat. Fat cat doesn't talk. Fat cat wears a hat. Fat cat wears pants, unlike some others that didn't at the time. But yeah, it was it was like a fever dream. We've got a clip. Let's see if we can play this little clip. And he, he did this, this good night boys and girls thing uh, was like a thing that would pop onto TV at night. Um, it's quite terrifying. Am I going to get a takedown for this? I hope not. I'm just going to play a little tiny bit of it. Why am I getting an ad or is that... Oh, that was it. Okay, so this is Fat Cat. I don't know what version this one is. Yeah, so this was him. So he'd go to sleep. And as you know, you go to sleep by covering your eyes. Um, so that's Fat Cat. Blinky Bill is uh, an Australian koala character. And you might have seen uh, the movie. There was a recent movie of this. So this is this guy. There was like a animated movie, which was actually not half bad. But um, Blinky Bill originally was like a cartoon character from the 80s. There he is. That's the OG Blinky Bill. There you go. He's a koala. And he also wears pants. Uh, the other one, Humphrey B. Bear, <laughs> is this guy. Who doesn't wear pants? Which is slightly more disturbing. So same sort of thing. They all seem to wear hats. But instead of being a cat like Fat Cat, this was a bear. But he wore no pants. And even the toys that you got there were pantsless. So same sort of deal. Did all the same sort of stuff. Um, Humphrey B. Bear. Toys, looked like that, was on kids' TV. So who would I pick out of Blinky Bill or Fat Cat? Uh, I mean, Blinky Bill, just because Fat Cat gives me the creeps and uh, doesn't exist anymore. And the new Blinky Bill movie has Tim Minchin as one of the voices, which uh, makes it cool in my in my regards. All right. Um, yes, that was, that was very uh, random, I know. Uh, just got audio share, but looks complex. Uh, look, it... Check out my videos. I know this is going to sound like um, a promotion thing, but it, it has a little bit of a steep learning curve, but it's not too bad once you get used to it. Um, if you search my name, Pete Johnson Audio Share, over here, I've got a couple of videos there. So if you want the quick rundown there uh, of how you use it, there's a two and a half minute video there, and this is like a deep dive. So this one, I spend almost an hour going through it in detail on iPad and iPhone. So search Pete John's audio share there, Michael, and I will I will guide you through it because it took me a while to get that hang of it as well, but it's super useful and super powerful. Once you get used to it, you'll be totally fine. <laughs> yeah, thick cat. That's what it would be these days, wouldn't it? Be a thick cat. They're showing Canada called the raccoons. Of course you did. Absolutely. The Raccoons is brought to you by Tim Bits. Um, well, I don't know why I'm obsessed with Tim Bits and um, Tim Hortons. I've never had a Tim Hortons coffee. Yo, Garfield is my favourite. I used to be a big Garfield fan. I've got an entire giant storage container of Garfield books. I owned almost every one. Every one. Koalas. Blinky Bill was a puppet first. Was he? Was he a puppet first? Was he like aggro? Was he that sort of style puppet? I can't remember that one. He animated on the raccoons. Oh my god, we got some such cool old school people in this. Not not old, sorry, Robert, <laughs> but some people with some really cool experience. Like I love it. Uh, who's it? Michael Thompson. Uh, I was like talking about some band, and he's like, "Oh yeah, I used to know the drummer for the Doors. I played with him on some gig." I'm like, "What? So cool. So many cool stories. So much good stuff. Uh, excellent stuff." And hello to you, Robert. Hope you're doing well. HR puffin stuff. That was weird. Uh, the Teletubbies are weird. Uh, there's a lot of weird stuff. Bluey's great. Banana splits. La, 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 Yeah, audio share is indeed the gateway drug. Hello, Emilio. Uh, you are late. Well, you're only an hour and a half late, mate, so you're fine. You're all good. Uh, Michael says, I just bought a MIDI keyboard, the Akai MPK249. You think it's good? I don't know. Let's see. 
I, I don't I don't know every keyboard. So uh, let's see, what's the MPK two forty nine packing? I'd imagine it's uh, yeah, that's that's good. That looks like it's got lots of options. Look at all the dials for goodness sake. Yeah, no, that that looks like a good unit. Got the uh, got the sliders there for your volumes for different channel control. You got a bunch of pads. You got what is that? Forty nine keys. Yeah, yeah, no, that looks like a very nice piece of kit. Congratulations, I like it. Uh, oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. You, if you get, can you bring me back some Tim bits if they have Tim Hortons in Thailand? That'd be cool. All right, I like it. Um, all right, I've caught up with the chat. If you can believe it. I can't believe it myself, and I'm running the show, sort of. All right, we're going to take another break. You've got half an hour to go, folks. So uh, please, if you do have questions, uh, we've still got 30 minutes to answer any questions you may have, but we're going to take our final break right now. And we'll continue with the show in just a jiffy. I did have some some pre-questions that I was going to talk about, but we've had so much great interaction, so much uh, cool chatter, that I haven't even had to go to them. So that's good. I'll leave them there. For the next time around, for the next time we do a show, or maybe we'll talk about a couple of them in the last 30 minutes. Everybody wants to be a cat because a cat's the only cat that knows where it's at. Okay. <laughs> I got the Ableton push controller for Christmas. Yeah, the only thing, and the reason, to be honest, Michael, that I don't have a fancy MIDI controller is that I use GarageBand uh, iOS and Logic Pro iOS, and they don't support a lot of the the different um, pads and knobs and dials and sliders. So I use a very basic MIDI keyboard. But um, yeah, if you if you like using sequences or you want to experiment and play around with stuff on the fly or go doorless or all that sort of stuff, yeah, there's some really amazing stuff that you can uh, you can check out. Tim Horton, coffee not good. Yeah, look, I I struggled in the US to find coffee. Starbucks is. I think Starbucks is popular because it's the best option you have. It's it's like Samuel Adams. Sam Adams isn't great beer, but it's absolutely the best that I found in the US. And uh, I found the same sort of problem with coffee. I couldn't find good coffee. It always seemed to, even the stuff, here's the thing. Here in Australia, we're absolutely spoiled for coffee. Like Manny and Jade and all the Australian friends, Ashley, well, all know that we're spoiled for coffee. Because you walk into any cafe Anywhere in Australia, country towns I'm talking, they'll have a decent espresso machine and they will hand make you an espresso. They'll put the bean, they'll put the grinds in there, freshly ground, do the thing. Espresso, lattes, cappuccinos. Great, right? I went to America and I was staying in like expensive hotels in Las Vegas. Go to the cafe there expecting to, at very minimum, to have a good, decent brewster to make coffee. And I'm like, ah, oh, can I have a coffee? Oh shit, six ninety nine for a regular cup, like a latte or a cappuccino. And the lady's like, sure. Turns around, puts it under a machine, presses a button, and then just stands there and watches it. Puts a lid on it, hands it to me. Seven bucks. In fact, no, seven forty two because tax. And I'm like, really? That's the best you could do in a classy, fancy four and a half star hotel in Las Vegas. Yeah. Uh, yeah, look, McDonald's coffee, uh, McDonald's coffee here is really good. You have to make your own. Yeah. Yeah. I reckon so. Uh, there you go. Get the, get the, uh, get the Tim Hortons. Wacky races. I loved wacky races. Uh, yeah. I know we're talking cartoons. We're talking coffee. We're talking everything. Uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's so much, uh, good stuff. I do indeed eat Vegemite sandwiches. Um, I've got a question here from Mark Bro, which I'll answer in a sec, but yeah, Vegemite, uh, not Promite, not Marmite, but Vegemite sandwiches, yeah. Uh, but I don't, so here's the thing about Australians. Most Australians, not all, but most Australians eat Vegemite. We like it, a lot of folks anyway, on toast mostly, not so much sandwiches, more more a toast thing. Uh, we don't drink Foster's beer though. And I say this all the time, but I still get people saying, oh, Foster's is Australian for beer. It's like, no, Foster's is Australian for the beer that we export to the US because it's still slightly better than most US beers, but it's about 212th on the list of good Australian beers. Just so you know, because the more you know, doo, doo, doo. do you know if there's an app for Mac that would be like the Russian dragon from back in the days? It was a hardware thing that told you if you're rushing or dragging in your tempo. I didn't know that that's a thing. Russian dragon. I'm going to, I'm going to look it up. Russian dragon. Russian 
dragon. I learn a lot when I do these shows. <laughs> Slavic dragon uh, is Greek mythology. Uh, Russian dragon app, maybe. I can't find anything when I search. It's it's given me uh, oh logic pre help. Oh, hang on. I found I found an article here. Uh, way off topic, but. A popular studio tool in the 90s was the Russian Dragon, pictured below. It gave a visual indication of the relative timing between two singles, that kick drum and a bass line. Huh. That's cool. There you go. I'll, I'll, link, to this, uh, I'll link to this article, because uh, I don't know. Yeah, there it is. The Russian Dragon. I didn't know this existed. So you got some people given some things. Yeah. So there might be. Maybe someone's made one. Or if they haven't. You know who would be down in, in the weeds of something like that? I can see Paul from Four Pockets making something like that. Like he's just the sort of level of geek that would make something like a Russian dragon app, uh, a UV3 app. I don't know. Jade, have you seen anything like that? Uh, I agree with Sam, Sam Adams. Yeah, look, it's good. It's, but again, like give me a moose head. Uh, Canadian beer. I used to be able to get moose head everywhere here. Now the only beer that you can get here in Australia that, that's Canadian is like Labatt, Labatt Blue, like the absolute, and the same with American beer, like the Pabst, Blue Rism, Rib, uh, Pabst Blue Ribbon and stuff. And I think it's like the hipsters, I think they're deliberately drinking bad beer now because it's like cool to drink bad beer. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, Starbucks is the option, exactly. And again, after the first couple of coffees, I just found the nearest Starbucks um, and went there instead because at least they actually hand make their coffees. Yeah, I can imagine that Canada has uh, better cafes and coffee. And look, again, I love a lot of things about America. I know people say, oh, are you bashing America? No, I love a lot of things about the US. I love going there. I've been there like six times. So <laughs> they're doing something right. Coffee, not one of them. Uh, go hear the cat song. You never have a friend like me. No, what's the Aristocats? I can't remember that song. I don't know. Vegemite does kick ass. Meh, Marmite, Promite. A Vegemite for the win. G'day. G'day, mate. Mr. Fomiati. Hope you're doing well. Spot on, David. Foster's is Australian for let's get this stuff out of the country. Exactly. And it's so weird because you go to the UK, Foster's everywhere. You go to the US, Foster's everywhere. You, it's special order here. If you go to a pub and Foster's is on tap or a, a draft beer, it's really weird. It, it looks odd. It looks odd. You're like, um, did I get whisked away to another country here? I don't get it. No, Australia, by the way, if you come to Australia, drink Coopers, uh, especially if you're down here in South Australia. Um, what else is good? Furphy is a good beer if you're in Melbourne. That's a beer brewed out of Geelong. If you're in Queensland, I guess you can drink Forex. They all do. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, Tasmania has um, great breweries. They have Cascade and James Bogues breweries. Uh, so even the mainstream breweries here in Australia are all good, um, except for some. I mean, Carlton, Carlton United Breweries, you've probably heard of. They're okay. But, um, yeah, there's there's some good options. And lots and lots of um, craft brews and microbreweries uh, around Australia that you can go check out, which are cool. All right. How's it different to a metronome? I think it's more, it's not so much that on the time, it's more like comparing two things to get in the pocket, I, I'd imagine, like being in the pocket and being in the groove, uh, like analysing it to see how, I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to. I'll have to explore it a bit more. It looks like fun. Uh, is it wise or necessary to put compression on a master mix if you've already used compression on various tracks? Uh, this is in GarageBand. Thanks. Good question. Not always. Um, usually, if you've compressed a lot of the tracks and you've got your overall level up close to zero dB, you won't necessarily need a compressor on your overall mix. What I tend to use on my final mix or final master is a limiter which is a form of compression, but I normally use very light limiting. So what I see and hear from a lot of folks is that, yeah, they do exactly this. They, they've they heard that you're supposed to compress your final mix or your master, but they've got so much compression on vocals, on guitars, on drums, that it's overdoing it. And that's where you, you end up getting pumping or you get that real like distortion at the top end and it sounds kind of rubbish. So yeah, I wouldn't do it by default. I would listen to your overall, again, mix and master with your ears, not with your eyes. So listen to your overall mix and check your metering. So uh, if you're in GarageBand, it's a bit hard because ugh, GarageBand doesn't have the best metering. Uh, but what you can do is get your final mix and send it somewhere like loudness. Do you know about loudnesspenalty.com? 
I'll, uh, I'll show you loudnesspenalty.com. This is a good way, like it's not specifically answering your question, but it's a good website to have because regardless of what you're using, whether you're on Mac or PC or Windows or iPad or iPhone or whatever, you can use this to check, uh, wrong button, you can use this to check your mix. So if I, for instance, came in here and I uploaded a file, let's just go to audio share and we'll throw in this like quick loop here that I've got here. <coughs> this tells me that this is probably a pretty quiet loop because it's being turned down across all of these platforms. So I've got a little bit of headroom. I could probably add a limiter and pull up the overall volume of that a little bit. Now, if I go back to the start again, if we just reset this, boom, 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 go, get rid of that. Oh, I'm using the wrong keyboard. I was wondering what was going on using the wrong keyboard. So if we say come in here and choose another file, so for instance, uh, my file of choices, uh, this one. So this will will check the entire song, and this one is this is my final mix. So see how it's saying it's going to turn it up everywhere. So some places don't turn up sounds, but the places like Spotify and Apple, it's going to turn up that final master quite a bit because this is fi my final mix of that song. Now let's compare that to my final master. So when I added the limiter, so if we come in here, choose the file and grab say this one which is a mastered file that I used uh, Mixia, which is a mastering. See, so check that out. Same across the board, virtually no turn downs anywhere because I took that final mix, I added the limiter and I brought up the, the volume. So I don't tend to compress my final masters, but I do tend to use a limiter just to get the volume up. And uh, if, you're, if you're unsure, you can use that 100% free. Uh, I'm not associated with it, but it's from um, a mastering engineer by the name of Ian Shepard. Uh, who's a very good, very good, very knowledgeable mastering engineer. And it's just a handy dandy little site to have uh, handy. Matt Parsons says, does a MIDI drama hack only paste MIDI when pasting a new project or does it, or does it work pasting into already saved projects? <laughs> I, I, that's a good question. I haven't ever actually tried pasting it into another project. I, I normally just use a fresh. So if you're not sure what um, what Matt's talking about here, let me just show you real quick. So there is a hack that you can do where you can actually take something from one. So you can take your MIDI drums. Let's see if I can remember how to do it on the floor. I, I always have to go back and re-remember how to do it myself. So uh, let's just create something in here. We'll just throw like a little bass line down. Uh, here's some autoplay. That's pretty cool. All right, and let's say we wanted to uh, have that drums, have the bass there, and we want to do a little drum and bass. So if we added in drummer here, throw the drummer in here, and uh, who will we use? We'll use someone funky. We'll use like uh, someone I don't usually use, uh, Graham. And let's just make him do something really weird here, like this. <laughs> All right, a little bit less complex. All right, so we've got this in here. Now, the way that the, I've got to remember how to do this on the fly. The way that this hack works, if you haven't seen it before, is what we do is we add in an audio recorder track here and we just record in a little bit of nothing. Like that. And then we slide this out. We put that there and that there. We copy these. Is this what we do? Oh, man, I can't even remember. We copy these and then we set up a new track. So what you're saying is, can, do, you, do you need to use a fresh track? Well, let's just say you've got another another track. So if I've got this one already set up, can I just add a drum to this one and throw that into this rather than have to set up my own separate track? Uh, in fact, we'll need to, let's create a smart drum track. We'll need to create a acoustic drum track. There you go. So. Yeah, the way this works is that we paste that in. Well, well, it hasn't worked there straight up. Do I have to I have to record into this again, don't I? Oop, go to the start. All right, so that's got that, and it's now got that and the drum track. So is it going to work in here with the same pasting method that we used before? 
doesn't seem oh we need to need an extra drum track <laughs> as you can see it's a bit of a weird hack and i i have to follow my own video every time i do it otherwise i can't get it to work can i paste at this location what am i doing wrong i'm obviously not on the ball here Let's, oh it's put it somewhere else oh, i've done it all the way up there see i think this is the problem i've had because it did it but it pasted it right up there so i think it's kind of specific so what if we if we bring all this up to the top is it going to let us do it there i think this is why i've tried this in the past and i think this is why i just open a brand new fresh project and just do it there because it's such a weird like hack that it doesn't really work there we go oh yeah see now it's gone back down to there again so yeah uh, i would i would say that you need to just use a fresh track to do it um so yeah sorry we tried we tried we failed uh, I think I drank old stock beer in Canada. That's never good. Yeah, you can taste it, can't you? When you drink beer that's past its use by date. Uh, pirate pirate life beer here in uh, Adelaide. Very, very good. Yep, I, I drink a bit of pirate life. Microbreweries for the win. Uh, are you well versed with sub bass sounds and EQ and their effect on other bass sounds? I'm not, mostly because of the type of music that I create doesn't use a whole lot of sub bass. Um, so no. Short answer, no there's probably better people to help you with sub bass. Um, I know what's not good. I know what I don't like, which is when people overdo it and you have sub bass that it just really can overpower a mix. So I know to be careful with it. <laughs> and I know, I know what I don't like, which is when I hear people that just do too much with it and it makes, it, it can ruin a song when you just add so much sort of sub bass low down. Uh, Thanks so much. I use a plug-in meter. I oh, will check out the website. Yeah. And look, you can you can use the plug-in meters as well. I think, again, four pockets make a good one uh, for metering. But uh, yeah, as, as your final check, uh, it's always good to just do that. All right. Where are we at? We are 15 minutes to go. Cool. Uh, hello, Clayton. Yes, Clay Clayton von Kluge, as I say, lots of things. Um, Pete's example tracks always have a color in the spectrum. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I always do that. Uh, it, it's, it, to be honest, it's quite deliberate. It's to make my thumbnails look a bit interesting, Clayton, to be honest. <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing. Yeah, I know. And that's the thing. I've never looked into it enough to really know how to, uh, how to, yeah, how to address that or how to, um, manage bass and sub bass. But, um, yeah, there's some good, uh, what is it? Is it Gangnam Style that starts with that? Gangnam Style. Yeah. Bass, bass, more. Yeah, bass is one of the hardest things to get right. I think that's why I switched to just making like acoustic music because I don't, I don't have to spend too much time down in the lower frequencies worrying so much about the bass side of things. That's my excuse anyway. I'm sticking to it. Uh, we got uh, about 10 minutes left. Do you have any final questions? Very thirsty in here today. Feel free to go ahead and put a cue in front of your question and I will ask answer any questions. I need some pink. Yeah, I do. I need to put some um I need to put some uh, pink in here. <coughs> let's use the FX. Let's let's do it on the fly here, shall we? We'll add some FX. All right, let's record it. Now we've got that. I'll just delete all these. I don't know why. I just had to do that because Clayton said so. And I always do what my uh, what my viewers tell me to do. Yay, now we've got pink. I've also ruined this. So I don't know what I, I recorded over the start of that. But again, don't forget, lossless. Not lossless. What am I trying to say? Uh, Non-destructive. <laughs> now we have the pink. The pink is back. I have never, I've never used Scalar 2. Scalar 2 is good. Uh, I've heard good things. I've seen people use them and uh, it's good. I reckon if I go Scalar 2 iOS, it's probably going to give me Jade's video, is it? Uh, yep, third one down. Good job, Jade. So um, I haven't used it, but I've heard nothing but good things about, about Scalar 2. So uh, yeah, uh, look, Mobile Music Pro. I wonder how, I haven't heard from Vortex for a while. I wonder how he's doing. Um, but yeah, Scalar 2 is apparently a very cool 
uh, app. Maybe it's something I should try. I tend to just get ideas in my head and go with them. Uh, but yeah, I guess if I was if I was getting to the point where I needed to to get some ideas or play some things in, I'd probably go with it. Uh, thank you, Robert. Appreciate you. Yeah, if you'd like to, if you'd like to hit the thumbs up because the sun's up, you're welcome to go ahead and do all of that. Uh, Mix Club says it's interesting. If you're compressing too hard and get hard transient peaks, you'll lose. Uh, over all luffs. Uh, if your snare pops at the start of a wave file, you kind of eating up head. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. It's a it's a, such a balancing act, isn't it? Such a fine balancing act, getting uh, getting everything where it needs uh, to be, for sure. Um, yes, yeah. Thank you. Feel free to feel free to throw the thumbs up if you had some fun just hanging out here. And if you're watching on the replay, uh, yeah. If you've got uh, other questions, feel free to ask them. I spend a lot of time down in the description. Do I still have that massive, huge Steinberg interface? Do I use it? <laughs> no, I mean, yes, I don't No, I don't use it. Yes, I do have it. I have that and all of the other um, stuff. And I've been meaning to sell it. Just ask Jade Star. I've been meaning to sell this stuff for the longest time. I just don't get off my ass to do it because I don't like having people come into my house. I don't like the tire kickers you get when you sell gear because they're like, you're like, oh, here's interface, $200. Good deal cost me 600 new and people are like oh i reckon i can do 50. it's like oh, get out of my house <laughs> so you know I, I tend to only sell on um i tend to only sell on uh, ebay because then i don't have to deal with people i just send them stuff <laughs> mates race oh yeah look if, if you're looking for a four channel audio interface uh i definitely do you a good deal because i said i don't have to worry about anything uh, uh, no, I don't because uh, my old mixer, I have a deep digital SLR that I don't use right now. So, uh, thank you for the offer, but, uh, no, thank you. Uh, and the old, the old zoom live track has a few little, little, little quirks that you need to work with. It's still a great mixer, but, uh, yeah, I know I, I should sell my gear. Like I don't need, I've got no storage left. Uh, so yeah, uh, I don't, I, I'm, I'm now using the Rodecaster Pro 2. And uh, hopefully I've got a little more volume here today because I, I did, I increased the StreamYard volume, but I'm noticing I'm still only hitting like around two dots on the volume and I used to hit four dots and I think I need to just turn up the master, but I haven't quite worked out how it all works and uh, I don't want to get clipping and whatnot as well. So there's that. Um, yeah, but no, because yeah, I also have a digital SLR to sell. So I'm also being lazy by not selling that one. Um, what's happening over the weekend? Well, there's, uh, as I mentioned before, we've got a few shows. Tomorrow we've got all the happy hours. So we've got the uh, Thomas Christ and then Jade Star and then myself. So you've got th yourself three hours of cool live music happening there. Your music live is happening. Uh, that is our independent show where we play your best independent music. And we do that for two hours as well, just like we did here today. And then Garage Band Weekly, which is now just a half hour show. And I completely forget what we're talking Compression, there you go. We're talking about compression on Garage Band Weekly this week. So you can check that all out. Thank you, Scars and Shadows. I appreciate you. Uh, yeah, the Roadcast is very cool. I'm using about 1% of its functions right now, but it seems to work uh, very well. So I, I, I dig it. Um, did we have any other things that I wanted to talk about? I'll cover a couple of things here. So I had a question that came through from Andrew, um, which you can read on the screen now. Basically talking about a, a CI2 Steinberg interface that wasn't working. And I've had this question a few times. And I thought I'd just mention it here on the show at the end where no one's going to get to to watch. Uh, but yeah, there's a problem with older gear in that it's not class compliant. So the simple way to know if a piece of gear is class compliant is unfortunately to plug it in. And if it works, it's class compliant. So class compliant, it's often called driverless. It just means it'll work out of the box. So if you plug in a USB device and it just works, you don't need drivers, you don't need software, you don't need anything additional. That's what's called class compliant. And some of those earlier Steinberg interfaces in particular, or any old, basically anything before about 2010 doesn't usually have a class compliant mode. Uh, the other thing you can check is sometimes it will have driverless mode or CC mode. My The Steinberg we were talking about before, the UR44 has that. So when you're using it with an iPad or an iPhone, you just need to flick it to um, CC mode. 
And if you're using it with a Mac or a PC, obviously you can run the, the drivers and the software. You can flick it over to full feature mode. And there's just some additional things that it can do uh, that it can't do in class compliant mode. So I just wanted to mention that because again, I've had a few people asking me, they've got an old audio interface, they plug it in and they get instantly disappointed because it doesn't work. And uh, that is the reason why. Phone is dying. Oh no. Uh, I, I should definitely give you a $600 interface for free. Hmm, maybe. Tool does rock. It's true. Tool is the best. Uh, the other thing that I got asked during the week is um, if you're re releasing a song with DistroKid, will it affect your YouTube content ID? I won't go on a giant, uh, giant rant about content ID today, but yeah, I wouldn't use it. I, I don't think it's worth it. So if you're not familiar with Content ID, that's where you release a song and you can actually pay, it's actually additional cost with DistroKid. So you pay for YouTube money, which is like uh, where someone uses your song, it'll identify it, it'll flag it, it'll give a copyright claim, and then any revenue made from that video doesn't go to the, the video creator, it goes back to you because they used your song. I just don't get it. I just don't want to go down that track because... I think that, well, I know for me, no one's using my songs in their videos. And if they are, good luck to them, more power to them. And yeah, I guess the, the risk that people see is that, well, what if, what if Mr. Beast suddenly uses my song and gets a 2 million stream, 2 million views on a video, and then I get nothing. It's like, A, chances of that are about somewhere between diddly and none. And B, hey, Mr. Beast liked your music. You've created something good. Maybe you can make something else good. And maybe if your music does start getting used, you can add it. But yeah, I just wouldn't do it in the first place. But to answer this question, uh, yeah, unfortunately, it's a new release. This is why I say to people, when you're releasing a song through District Kid, double, triple, quadruple check it. Because yet, while you can remove and re-release a song, they make you jump through hoops to do it these days. And if you've paid for additional features you may definitely lose those and have to pay for those additional features again. So uh, what is it? Measure, measure twice, cut once, something like that. Yeah, something like that. All righty. Um, there was one other thing, was there? Yeah, I also, <laughs> when I did last week's podcast about iPads, uh, yeah, I had a comment which was uh, funny. I wish they would make the headphone jack a priority. As do I. I miss my headphone jack. I won't stop talking about it, even though I'm kind of over it now. But yeah, I totally miss my headphone jack too. I wish they would come back. <sighs> oh, not fun. All right. Um, I hope you're having. I hope you have a great weekend. Um, I, I want to show. Oh, one more thing. <laughs> Check out this one. I did a video many years back about why you can't use GarageBand on a PC and it probably generates the funniest comments and I thought this was gold. I gotta be honest, this is the most frustrating video I've ever watched and still can't find the answer. Just you effing talking BS. Yes, exactly. So if you haven't seen that video, I start the video by saying, you can't. If you've come here to find out if you can run GarageBand on a Windows PC, you can't. And then I go on to tell all the reasons why that's the case. In fact, let's just, let's go out. We've got two minutes left. Let's go out. I'll just play you a little bit of this to see what, uh, what got this person so worked up and uh, abusing me in the comment section of my video here. So uh, it's from five years ago. And uh, here's me. It's back when I used to do a lot of videos while I was out walking. Probably also about 20 kilograms lighter, just quietly. Uh, but let's just take a quick look at this uh, before we finish up the show today. Hey, Pete here for Studio Live today. Now, you know those videos where they spend 20 minutes talking about something that you're trying to do only to tell you that it can't be done. Well, this is not one of those videos. So because I value your time and you're here to answer the question, can I download and install Apple's GarageBand software on my Windows PC? I want to cut straight to the chase and tell you the answer. No, no, 100% no. I'm so this is at 25 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> and then I go on for another seven minutes talking about all the reasons why, all the things that people will say about making Hackintoshes and all the things that people will say about, oh, but my mate said that one of his cousin's girlfriend's hairdresser actually did it one time. Um, but yeah, so this guy, after 25 seconds, was so frustrated with the video that he had to tell me that it was the worst video he'd ever seen. And I just found that 
kind of entertaining because yes if i'd spent seven minutes talking about it and then saying oh but no you can't do it i'd understand exactly why he said that it's so bizarre so yeah i just thought i would uh, i'd show you that one because i found it a little bit amusing uh, that is going to do it for me. I will be back tomorrow playing some music. If you've got any suggestions for me, you know all the places you can hit me up. You can hit me up on email. You can go to studiolivetoday.com for all the places that you can interact with me online. You can leave a comment on this very video. Uh, and I'm saying all that because I've got zero idea what I'm playing tomorrow, but it's going to be fun. We're going to hang out. We're going to have a beverage and we're going to play some live acoustic music. Until then, I have but three things to say to you. Be kind to yourself, be kind to others, keep creating, and I'll see you next time right here on Studio Live today. See ya.